Now, I will talk about uh, the connection, the, the profound uh, bond that these Buddhist schools had with the Kamakura military government later on in my discourse of today. However, before I do that, I would like to talk a little bit about Nichiren's uh, reaction to what he saw happening in the society. As I said before, the, com the country was plagued by a variety of hardships and great suffering. Uh, many people were starving, even sometimes even dying from disease, uh, left on the streets to die. And Nietzsche saw very, very little help forthcoming from the government. And also very little help forthcoming from uh, these temples too. It left Nietzsche with a, a great sense of doubt and also anxiety that something had to be done. Of course, the Japanese military, having been just brought from Kyoto to the new capital of Kamakura, was, they were very much preoccupied with trying to establish a new, new city and get it to function and, and also to, uh, to gather their forces and their authority in order to, to maintain a stable government. So probably little time and energy or even financial uh, backing was left that they could use to help the people. Nonetheless, Nietzsche had a great desire to try to open the eyes of the people of the government and of these, these great Buddhist temples in order to help them to uh, change the fate of their people and turn the situation around so that the people would cease to suffer. He longed to bring stability and tranquility to all his people and throughout the country. And so Nichiren Daishonin spoke to a number of people. He spoke to many priests. He spoke to people directly, one by one. He even so often stood on the street and tried to talk to the people directly, preaching the Dharma, imploring them to change their fate and also to return to a proper faith in Buddhism. Nichiren Daishonin, though, felt that to really have a great effect, to really help his people in the nation, he would have to address the government directly. This was something unheard of in medieval Japan. Just as in, J in Europe here, it would be unheard of of a local priest or an average person such as Nichiren to address the Lord or a king directly. However, Nichiren was a very courageous man and he decided to address the government by writing a letter which was called the Risho Ankokuron. This letter was written only seven years after he first established Nichiren Shu. The letter was finished and submitted to the government on the 16th of July of 1260. In this letter, he criticized the government's way of governing the people and the corruption seen between the government and the Buddhist schools, with no attempt to help the people suffering. He also criticized the way, uh, the tendency that the world of Buddhism was taking in Japan of that era. He questioned these new forms of Buddhism and new Buddhist movements. He questioned their validity and if they really they would have been taught by the Buddha himself. He was afraid at times that the confusion he was seeing was creating a distortion of the teachings and that would not only cause more confusion in the Buddhist world of Kamakura at that time, but also have a very negative effect on society itself. Not only did Nichiren Daishonin, as he said, write to the government, but he tried to speak to many priests personally. Nichiren Shonin had no temple. He had no financial backing. He was just one man, one monk, trying to preach the Dharma. He was a man of great courage and a man of great faith. And he understood that this courage and faith would have to endure a lifetime of hardship. 
Therefore, when he submitted the Rishuan Kokuron, he was prepared to overcome any obstacle and even risk his life so that he could propagate the Dharma. Why did he do this? Of course, it was to help the people of his time, the society of his time, the world of Buddhism of his time. But it was also done so that each and every one of us could, de could today embrace the Lotus Sutra and have a chance to become an illuminated person, an enlightened person, just like the Buddha Shakyamuni himself. The government officially, after receiving the Rishon Kokuron, remained silent. Their official stance or public stance was to ignore Nichiren Shorinji. However, in reality, they were indignant that such a monk could so publicly criticize their authority, the way of governing the people and the status quo of the society of the time. They looked at him as a rebel, a troublemaker, someone who would not accept the status quo. They looked at him later also as an enemy of the state. Nietzsche, of course, was very aware that all of these problems would probably occur and was prepared, as I said before, to meet every obstacle and overcome anything that was thrown his way so that he could preach the Dharma and pass it on for future generations or centuries to come. The Kamakura temples that were involved with the government authority came into direct criticism by Nietzsche and Shonen. This rendered these temples highly angry and with a desire to take revenge and silence Nichiren Shoni. His very presence and the fact that he had the courage to stand up and speak openly to everyone was a great threat to them. 